Hey Zaki Tech Nation, welcome to my review of The Boy and the Heron, the first Hayao Miyazaki film I'm getting to check out in theaters. I was super duper uber excited to check this out. It's one of my most anticipated films of the fall slash winter season. And I'm gonna talk about like two reasons why I think this movie is really good and worth checking out in theaters, but two reasons why I think it falls short from being great and disappointing me a little bit. Let's attack it. Animation is absolutely gorgeous. It needs to be seen on the biggest screen possible. The scope of the worlds that is built here, the scope of the film and where it goes and how creative and beautiful everything is, the characters, the backgrounds, like paintings, all the different type of weird characters you get in these Studio Ghibli Hayao Miyazaki films are here. Funny parrots, funny birds, funny animals, <laughs> and all these little things that brings a lot of charm. People say a lot of times that Studio Ghibli and Hayao Miyazaki is like the Japanese Disney because Disney has those charming aspects to it but he just takes the creativity to a whole nother level in terms of what he can do on screen especially keeping it in traditional animation it's absolutely gorgeous and it's so bright and nice and it would be a shame to check it out on your small tv and not the biggest screen possible One thing I gotta say is that the themes of loss, grief, and acceptance was very strong throughout the film. I think that the story dwelled into this character's Mahito, I think he's his, his name. He lost his mother. He was when dealing with that grief, that loss, and trying to figure out where to go as a young kid for years. And then he has to accept that his father has moved on and he has a new family. And that sends him on a crash course with this hair on and him trying to find his mother in the afterlife. And I think that the way that mystery was unfolding and how they planned it out in that beginning of the movie was really, really interesting and kept me intrigued for a bit. This movie really dwells on the chaos that can happen for, a, it can happen for an adult, but a kid losing someone that he loves so much suddenly, and then also have to deal with you know, the adults in his life kind of moving on and not showing the grief in the way that he is and accepting new family members in their lives. It's just really interesting to see how he interacts and how cold he was towards everything. Now we're gonna get into the reasons why I think the film could have been great, but wasn't. And one of it was that the first 45 minutes to hour was a little bit boring, unfortunately. And it mainly because the main character didn't really have a lot of personality. I think the problem here was that the movie lacked a lot of context throughout the film to make me really feel engaged through everything that was happening. We don't know how he was with his family before he lost his mother. So we don't really get to see what he lost just kind of infer and then after we don't get really inside of his head he's silent throughout most of the movie so things are just happening without full context of why he's doing what he's doing you kind of just have to guess that he's do you know he got into a fight so he wouldn't have to go to school anymore but that's not fully there because then when it's asked why the, the thing that happens in the movie happens he doesn't give a clear answer so throughout the film as it progressed there was a part of me just kind of nodding off a little bit in that first hour where i was just like okay spending a lot of time on the setup and none of the characters here are super interesting and the main character is not talking much or really saying us how he feels so i was kind of not really invested in what was going on it wasn't until later in the film where he got transported to this different world and all the creativeness came out where it started kind of clicking in again and even though that it got more interesting when he got into the different world and we started seeing all these weird creatures and characters and colorfulness and some action and things like that I think that the film was trying to take a very abstract take on a lot of the themes I talked about before and grief and dealing with that and accepting that, you know, trying to find your mom or accepting that your mom is dead and accepting your new family and dealing with all those emotions. But it made the film very incoherent. A lot of the time I was like, what is going on? Why is this happening? Where there's no context or explanation. It's just things just felt like it was just happening. And the story was just being told just because they could tell it. And it was just really, really weird. It wasn't that enjoyable of experience and I, you know obviously people around you doesn't dictate how you should feel this tons of times where i'm watching a movie and i'm like making noises and no one else in the theater was making noise but it was a lot of time where everybody was just kind of silent and it felt like everybody in the room was trying to figure out 
what the point of this movie and what was going on in this film and obviously at the end of the film it clicks and, it, and you understand what the point of the film is but that journey there is not as enjoyable as i wish it was So yeah, while the movie is gorgeous, has some creative animation and characters and, and situations and concepts and things like that they would do with this, the, the fantasy aspects, I think that the fact that the story was too overstuffed, had too many different storylines, each act felt like it could have been its own movie and if they would have just did that movie, like the first act as a movie or the second act as a movie, as a full-fledged movie, this could have been more enjoyable, but the way it was, I thought it was just okay. It was a, It's a good movie. It's a gorgeous film, but it's not great, unfortunately. So with that said, I'm going to give The Boy and the Heron a C. Did you like it? Did you hate it? What would you rate The Boy and the Heron personally? Is it one of your favorite films or favorite animated films of the year? Or do you feel like me where you feel a little bit disappointed, but it's still good? Or are you the rare person that doesn't like it at all? I haven't heard anybody that doesn't like it at all. Uh, if you don't, let me know in the comments down below why you feel like that. Hit that like button, let YouTube know you liked my review. Attack the subscribe button so you can join the Zach Attack Nation and hit that notification bell so you can notify my reviews, reactions, live discussions, and much, much more. You can watch more of my content right now.